everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Um, my name's Joe. I am here with the second installment of how to make a folio. So, um, I went through on what we did on the first video and I sewed everything. So, I'm sure you can see where I sewed along the edges of all of these pieces. And now I kind of had a thought of what I want to do with these because, um, I don't know, sometimes, you know, I do windows in them or a pocket or a side tuck, you know, something, something like that. And I think what I want to do is I want to add, this will go like this, a couple of belly bands that go across so that we can put a journaling card in here and it'll hold these down so they don't flap while um, when you're thumbing through your folio. So I'm gonna have to put washi tape over that. So my sewing machine went on the fritz whenever I was sewing this piece. I don't know why, but it just, uh, the bobbin got caught up or whatever but we're just going to put some washi tape over that and that'll look just fine so what i'm going to do is i think what i want to use is that blue paper yeah that we used for the deep pocket and i'm just going to cut a couple of strips off of here and i like when i've already sewed it I like to come to the inside edges of the sewing instead of going edge to edge. I just think it looks nicer because I'm not going to sew these little belly bands. You can if you want to. Um, I try not to get too carried away with my sewing. But okay, so right there, let me grab this. And cut that down. And I'm thinking wait is that straight yeah I'm thinking probably well how long is this before I it's almost six and a half um maybe an inch and a half strip size yeah we're gonna go with an inch and a half I think that'll be sturdy enough so there's one I'm taking this one over to one and a half and no, 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 come on. There we go. Two. All right. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to ink them up, knock stuff over because that's what I do with my life apparently. And... Almost got it. And then what we'll do is we will glue these down and then we will glue the pockets closed and get them glued onto their base so that we can um, glue it all into the folio. So I'm just gonna take this one and I'm gonna take a little bit of my glue and I'm just gonna put a thin little line on each edge or just the two outside edges here of this piece of paper. And I'm gonna just set it down somewhere eyeballing it, looking about the middle. Try to make sure that's straight. And I think it is, I think. No, not quite. Turn it on just a little bit. See, this is why I use Fabri-Tac, I'm telling you. I, I, I like to eyeball, but I'm not necessarily the best at it. So, okay, so there's one. And then this one, Oh, I didn't even think about this. Make sure that you have these lined up the way that they're going to go on the um, on the base so that you get this on the right side because you don't, we're not putting it on the back side that's gonna be on the open flap. We're putting it on the outside so we could put something here that'll hold these closed. So um, yeah, so watch watch that. And I've done that a few times for sure. So just a little bit of glue on the ends of this one. It doesn't take much. Just a little line. We'll 
hold it in place. Sometimes when I do it, I glue it before I sew it and I go to the edges and that way the sewing goes right through it. I like doing that. But I think, yeah. Okay, so now let's glue these suckers shut and um, see what it all looks like all put together. So I always, instead of gluing over here, I always start over here where the, with the side without the gusset because um, if you notice, well, not in this one, but sometimes the, it's not, it doesn't quite line up flush and you'll have like just a little peekaboo of the stitching. And this way I know that I'm getting the edge glued um, you can do it however you would like to do it, but that is how I choose to do it. So all I'm doing is two lines of glue, one on the outside and one on the bottom. That's it. And then I'm going to close that, give it a little squish. It takes Fabri-Tac just a few seconds to dry. And then I'm peeling it off my fingers for hours, but you know, the price we pay. So, okay, so that is good, and I have my pocket. I'll let that dry, and then we'll get this one. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come over here to the side without the gusset, and I'm gonna do glue down the edge here on the outside, and then glue at the bottom. Okay, and then I'm gonna shut that. Give that just a second. So you got your pocket there. Okay, so while those are drying, I'm going to glue the gusseted pocket onto the base. Now, the way that I do it, I don't decorate until the very, very end. I don't do any washi tape, any die cuts, any extra small pockets, um, sometimes little add-on belly bands at the last minute. I don't do those until I've got the complete base of my folio done. So you might look and think, man, this is kind of plain, or, you know, is she going to do anything with that? That's a lot of unused space, or there's an air that needs covered or something. Just know it will be dealt with. It's just not time for that yet. So all I did was I pushed the gussets back where they go because they were their accordion, and I just kind of folded them back down to where you have that M right there on each side and then flipped the bottom one up a little bit. And now what I'll do is I'm gonna put glue on this edge, this edge, and this edge, and then maneuver it down into place. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here and a little bit of glue here. And then on the bottom. Now, if my dog barks, I apologize. It'll probably scare the tar out of all of us because she's got one of those beastly barks. But she's been trying to tell me something. And we've already been outside. We've already eaten. We've already had all of the treats. So I think she's just wanting to go outside and bark because the neighbor's dogs are out there and... You know, she must protect us. So if that happens, I apologize because that's just her trying to get my attention when I'm crafting. She'll stand on the other side of the gate and she grunts like an ape. It's very, very funny. <laughs> and then she'll bark if I don't pay attention. She is a six-year-old Great Pyrenees. And um, best animal I ever could have... I ever could have owned. Okay, so there's that. That is glued down. You can see right there. And if you don't get the line, get it perfectly flush with the sides or the lines, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, sometimes I try to push it out a little bit, but it's it's not. I mean, it's not an exact science, and it's not easy. And and these are junk journals. They're supposed to be messy, I think. So. I'm a perfectionist, so it makes it hard for me, but, but errors are okay. So let me get that string out of there. And on the strings, you guys can cut those if you want and then put a little glue down just to make sure that it doesn't unravel. 
I like the strings. I think it adds character. So that's why I don't, I don't cut them. I like it. I think it gives it that, that messy look. So now you have your big, deep gusseted pocket. And now we're going to glue these onto this base. So this one, I believe was at the bottom and I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to glue this right like this because then when I flip it over, it'll be the way I need it to go. So, and I'm not gonna put it all the way at the bottom. I'm gonna come above the stitching line about an eighth of an inch, and I'm gonna put some glue on the inside, right here, ah, right here. Way to go, Jode. All right, and then we're gonna place it with the gussets being on the edge. You don't want to glue your gusset down because then you lose your flipping power. Glue, glue, glue all over my fingers already. All right, so we've got that one down. Now I've got to do the other one. And I'm just going to do it right here at the top. And it's going to be glued down like this because when we flip it, it'll be where it needs to be. So I'm going to put some glue on the inside of this one. I don't want that in there. Nope, okay. And then I'm just gonna set it down right about an eighth of an inch below the stitching line. And I'm making sure that I my gusset is lined up. And I know by looking, I'm not gonna overlap, which you know what, if you overlap, that's a thing, it's okay. It's not gonna hurt nothing. So we flip it over and there we go, voila. So what I meant is, let me find a journaling card here. And I can show you, this would go like, no, my fingers aren't working today like this, and then it keeps this from flapping open when you're flipping through your folio pages. So we'll have to make a cool um, journaling card for right there when we start doing the ephemera and the decorating and all the stamping and fun stuff that we're gonna do. So, okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue this in the folio because I know that this panel is done. I'm happy with it. I'm leaving these open. I like to leave pretty images open for picture backgrounds and things like that. Um, more than likely, I will probably put another pocket here because that would cover my little air over here as well. Um, and it's a lot of unused space, but I do the smaller pockets and things like that after the base is, the, the, the gist of the folio is complete. So. I have my base right here, and I'm just gonna flip it open to that first page that I said I was gonna start on. And, oh shoot, before I do that, I forgot. Whenever I used craft paper as a, um, as a base, I always come in and ink up the gussets. It just gives it more of kind of a grungy look. Um, you can use whatever color ink you want. I'm using Vintage Photo. I like, I like the grunge factor it gives. Um, but you could use, I would use a brown because that's kind of the, the concept of it is just to make it look a little aged and it's already brown. But I mean, that's just me. You have your own vision and that is probably going to be just as beautiful. So... Almost got it here. I can't believe I almost forgot to do that. I'd have been mad. They're not very easy. I mean, you can ink them afterward, but it's not as easy as before because you can't really get under a lot of spots. I will clean this mat later. It is in sore need of a cleansing. Okay, so we're gonna start here, like I said, and I'm taking my finished panel and I'm gonna glue it right here. So I'm gonna flip it over to the back. I'm gonna maneuver any strings out of the way that I can. Half the time I'm still pulling them out anyway, but do what you can. 
And then I am going to do glue all along the edges because sometimes the edges like to come up and we don't want that. We want this good and solid. And then I'm just gonna kinda throw some glue down like this. Okay. And then we're gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna line it up at the bottom, just maybe one or two score lines on each side over the gusset. And just lining it up with the bottom and then I'm gonna check the top. Okay, so you can open it up Make sure you're even, and then just push it down. All right, so that is our first panel. Down, sewed, just needs a little decorating, and it is good to go. So next, I wanna do, I think I wanna do this panel. Yeah, so, um, we have two flips on this side, and I've been kind of putting a little thought into um, what I want to do. So over here, I want to do kind of like an envelope with um, a long top and then a little closure down here. We'll have some jute coming out from underneath it. Um, jute is the only thing I think that I'm using today. This is what I use. I just get it at Walmart. Um... It's the only thing I'm using today that I did not use yesterday. So, uh, and that's probably what I'll use. I may end up using my crocodile and an eyelet, but I may just do a circle. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. It just depends on kind of how it goes. So I went ahead and pulled one of every sheet out of here cause it's just easier for me. And then I know that the diversity of the paper pack made it into the folio. So one of every page is represented. It's a, I don't know, I just, I think that's important. So I wanna grab something that isn't too much like these. So I think I'm gonna go with one of the green papers. And let me see here, I gotta think. I don't think I'll use a leaf one. That's one of my favorites. I'm gonna save that one for something special. I just haven't decided yet. Um, that white one's all right. We've already got a gray base. Where's the other green one? I'm... There's that green one. And I could have swore there was one other green one. It's hiding if it's in here. Oh, hello. I bet it's right there. Boom, this is the one I wanna use. I'm going to use this sheet, and I'm going to use this sheet. So I'm going to put these up over there. Okay, so first and foremost, it's going to be a gusseted pocket with a flap. So I don't necessarily want to come all the way to the top, but I do need gussets on each side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and set it down. Yeah. And I'm gonna give it about that three quarters of an inch overlap. And I'm gonna mark it right on the end of the gusset line, right where the end of it should end up when you glue it down. So right there on the gusset line. And then I'm gonna come over here. Oh, I told you the barking would start. And then we're gonna mark here on the end. Sabine, it is okay. I'm so sorry. I wish I could splice this stuff out of my my videos, but it is just not, not a possibility. So I'm gonna mark on the end and then I'm gonna mark about three quarters over. And I think, yeah. And then I've gotta figure out the bottom. So I'm gonna line it up with the top. Where am I at? There we go. And Mark it right down here at the bottom. And then Sabine, it is enough. And then mark it right here. Okay, so that's about a quarter of an inch that it'll give us. Okay, so we got to cut this out. Like this. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to have you guys give me just one minute. I just want to make sure that they are okay. Okay, other than them trying to sweet talk me into going outside, there's nothing out there, but I think the neighbor's dogs maybe. And that seems to be the cause for all the excitement. Okay, so I cut at the outermost mark on this sheet. And then I'm going to cut down here at the outermost line on the bottom. Okay, so now we've got to score this to where it ends up like a gusseted pocket. So I'm gonna do the bottom first, and I'm gonna find my mark, get it in line with one of these little crevices, and just go straight down. And then, all right, so I'm gonna get this one lined up with one of them, and I'm gonna mark it down. And then I'm gonna come over three, and do it again, and then come over another three. Is that right? That's right. And score it again. So you should have three score lines that are approximately a quarter inch apart. Let's let's measure that to be sure. Yeah, they're about exactly a quarter inch apart or three of these little crevices. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna find my mark down here at the bottom and I'm gonna line it up and then I'm gonna do the same thing. One, two, three. Okay, so this is how it should look. You should have your three lines and then your one line at the bottom. I know it's kind of hard to see that so I'm trying to help. So, okay, so now I gotta cut the bottom and we're gonna cut it like we did that other one. So I'm gonna come in up here and I'm gonna cut right here where this long part is that doesn't have any score lines. I'm gonna cut it angled right there to the corner and then I'm gonna turn my scissors and kind of semicircle it out. And then the other side, it's easier if you just flip it upside down and I'm gonna cut right here to the corner and then turn my scissors just like that. So that's exactly how that ought to look for you. Okay. So I got, oh 